All right. Today we're going to do a little review of midpoint of segments and midpoints of number lines and midpoints of coordinate planes. Let's recall that a midpoint can be found for any segment, not any line. Lines are infinite length, but any segment. And if I want to find the midpoint M, we know it's right in the center. And I'll call it point M. And when I find that point, that's an important point because it divides the segment into two equal portions. Middle point, the middle point. So the overall length, AB, is congruent to AM and MB. We know that line. But more importantly, anytime you have a segment and you have a midpoint, you can skip right to this statement. You know it's two times one of the shorter segments. Either two times AM or two times MB. And these are all congruent relationships. And the orientation doesn't matter. If I rotate the line all around, and if I group it, that doesn't matter. M is still the midpoint, and these equations still remain true. All right? When we have things too, we can get a midpoint by bisecting the line. Right now, point M bisects line AB. Point M bisects line AB. M splits AB into two points. I can say anything splits it. So if I put a line through M, and I have point D. We all know from symbols that this is line DM. Now I can say line DM bisects segment AD. And it still splits AB into two equal portions. DM bisects AB. It splits into two portions. We know that. We can write these relationships every time. That's about a segment. Often in geometry, we'll ask the midpoint on a number line. It's a one coordinate system, and typically we call this coordinate system x. And I'll give you some x values. So we would locate two points. And again, I like a and b. So I locate a at negative 4. I locate b at 6. Again, if we think of this as a segment length, all right, if we think of this as a segment length, I hope you all see that it's 6 here and 4 here, absolute values. Or 6 minus and minus 4 makes this line 10 long. Well, we know the midpoint. If I'm, oops. We know the midpoint then breaks 10 in half. It's 5 and 5. So it goes 5 this way and 5 this way. Well, that puts us right there on the midpoint, which is point 1. And we can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, two, three, four, five. That's a bad method, though, because it depends on the scale being equal to 1. But we can quickly learn a useful fact about midpoints. If I want to calculate the midpoint, the midpoint is the average of the endpoints. Well, the endpoints in this case is I want to find the middle point of AB. You know, find the midpoint between A and B. It's the average. Well, the average of negative 4 and 6 is adding the 2 together and dividing by 2. Negative 4, 4 plus 6 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And we showed that already. And we know our midpoint is F. All right? So I'm going to do a few more examples rather quickly. But I'm going to start by developing a general form formula for you. So anytime you have one variable, you can use a formula, which is the endpoints, x1 plus x2, the values of the two endpoints, divided by 2. That will result in the midpoint. This is a formula we can use. Again, remembering formulas is hard. With a little practice, you'll see this in your mind, okay? Because my favorite example to start with on a number line is, what's the midpoint between 3 and 5? 
visually, I hope you guys can see the midplane is four. One each way, boom. But again, the formula really helps spell it out. Three plus five over two, eight over two is four. That's my midpoint M. All right. Here's a little number line of four points, and I'm going to ask you to find the midpoint of three different segments. You can pause me and try to calculate it. I'm going to quickly just calculate them here, one after the other. A, B, negative three plus negative six. Those are the end points. Divide by two, negative nine over two, negative nine halves, which is negative four and a half. A and B, it's right there. You can see the distance. Boom, boom, same distance in between. BD, from negative 3 to, to positive 6. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 3 over 2 is 1 and 1 half. Between B and D, the midpoint is right there. Again, I like smart boards because I make that line and then I move it. You can see it fits the same way. All right? Finally, AD, negative 6 to 6. Well, this one I think is a little more obvious. 6 each way, but negative 6 plus 6 over 2, 0 over 2. How many 2's does it take to make 0? Zero? 0. And that's the midpoint of AD. These are number lines. Now, sometimes, to make these more complicated, we don't give, we don't give the endpoints. We give an endpoint A, and I say something like Q, is midpoint of AB. And I give you A is negative 6. And then I'll give you Q is negative 2, and I'll say find B. Now our equation changes. We still have to average the endpoints. The endpoints are A and B. I only know A, I don't know B. So if I plug in A, for what I know, I'll put in negative 6. I have some value out here. And if we look here, do we agree that B has to be on the other side of the midpoint? So somewhere out here is B. And we don't know its value. And I'm just going to call it X, an unknown variable, over 2. But I do know the value of the midpoint, negative 2. And when I get this equation, I've gone from geometry, where I've covered my arm, to some algebra. This stuff divided by 2 equals negative 2. All right, well, I know how to solve this. Multiply both sides by 2. Get negative 6 plus x equals negative 4. Add 6 to both sides. And I get x equals 2. So I plot my point B here. And we can just see, if I erase the other B, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a balancing act. Again, typically it's easier given the endpoints to find the midpoint. So, again, if I just pick some statements here, instead of putting them on the number line, and I'll erase the work here, I'll leave the equation. If I told you A is 12 and Q is negative 2, all right, can you find B? If you want to pause me, you can. But again, 12 is off the number line, but we agree it's way out here somewhere, beyond the arrow. Q is negative 2. Well, we know B then has to be way over here someplace, right? We don't know the value, but Q has to be between A and B, because Q is the midpoint. Well, let's not overthink this. Let's fill it in. I will call point B, again, unknown X. So I end up with 12 plus x, average the outside, average the endpoints. We always average the endpoints. 12 plus x over 2 results in negative 2. 
All right, multiply both sides by two, you get 12 plus x equals negative four. Subtract 12, x is negative 16. All right, we averaged the outsides. We knew a and we made b an unknown x. We didn't know b. We always average the outsides to result in the midpoint. All right, lastly, we can do it on the coordinate plane. All right, when you think of a number line, y is always zero. All right, but now we can move around the coordinate plane. And I always do this the same way. A is three comma one. B is negative 2, ooh, let's not do negative 2, negative 5, comma, 3. 3, 1, negative 5, 3. Now the problem is, just like the first page where we talked about the segment, we know that Q, that if I find the midpoint Q, midpoint Q of A, B, we know Q is here in the center, but it's really hard to identify the midpoint. But here's the great thing. We can separate X's and Y's using the same formula. The midpoint formula is always the outside two coordinates averaged for each respective coordinate. So it's the average of the X's and it's the average of the Y's. And this will be our midpoint, Q in this case, or any midpoint. Well, again, we know the points. The x coordinates are 3 and negative 5, and that's why I like writing them vertically, so they kind of line up. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. 1 and 3. 4 over 2 is 2. So negative 1. And my drawing might not be perfect, but it's close enough. And here's the cool thing to notice. We know this distance has to be the same as that distance. Also, because the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the same in this case, because we can see a right triangle here, the right triangle legs also have to be the same. So we got this every time. So anytime we want to do this, we can find the average. All right? So yeah. Do you have a large protractor, like big size? In the in the refrigerator, Joel, help her out. All right. So I want to do another one. change my scale. I'm going to shrink it. Oops. I'm going to shrink it down. There. Negative 4, 7. Now, negative 4, negative 7 is right here. A. 3, 8. Physical science. B. Again, we'll picture Q, the midpoint, somewhere in the middle. So I don't know. But around here, right? We have a good guess. I don't even really have to graph it. It's the average of the endpoints. I have the endpoints, so I average them. Negative 4 plus 3 over 2 will be negative half. 8 and negative 7 is 1 half. I'll tell you right now, the midpoint is at negative half, positive. Negative half, positive half. It's right here. And if I draw a good straight line, well, that's not bad for me. There's Q right on the middle and it worked out again again the struggle on this is when you don't have the endpoints the struggle here is when you have a or let's just do b this time we're going to find a a is, we don't know a q will be three five and we'll make b negative two 
4. All right? If we plot it, negative 2, 4, 3, 5. Hopefully, again, you look at this and you know Q has to be between A and B because Q is the midpoint. So A has got to be somewhere over here. All right? It's to the right of the two points because Q has to be between. But now, I have to average the outsides, but I don't know A. And when I don't know it, I really think calling it x comma y makes sense. X and negative 2 are the x-coordinates then. And you have to average those. But what do they result in? This time they result in the midpoint, the x-coordinate of the midpoint, 3. Like terms almost, you know, all x's. Again, now it's an equation we must solve. x minus 2 equals 6. x is 8. All right. I'm going to shrink that down. I'm going to calculate y now. 